That's why people buy, how they feel. All sales are an emotional decision on some level. I don't care what you say. If you're in sales, you know this. If you're not in sales, you think this is poppycock or bullshit. But the reality is, hind brain is in charge. You want to make some money, right? You want to start a business. You want to be a boss, correct? What is the first thing that you need to do when starting your business? What's the answer? What are you going to do? Do you even know? In this video, I'm going to discuss the first thing that you need to do with starting your business. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of HustlersKungFu.com. Be sure to grab your free 19 business courses. It'll help you start a business, help you learn how to hustle, get your mind together, get yourself straight, and it's free. But I do ask of these two things of you. Tell two people about the channel and about the free courses. And if, once again, if you find value with the courses, pay what you want. The link is on the same page that you get your first, your free courses. So with that, let's jump into the video. Okay, the first thing that you need to do when starting your business is understand that you are in sales. I don't care if you are a CPA. I don't care if you're a doctor. I don't care if you're an attorney. Everyone is in sales. That's the first thing that you have to understand what you do. Because this failure to appreciate and understand that could be the main reason that you go out of business. Okay, the thing you got to really understand. Now, when I say sales is your primary job, what you have to do is part of understanding that sales is the main thing that you're doing is understanding how sales begets your business. Part of understanding that sales is job number one for business is understanding what sales is and how it applies to your business model. Number one, say you're a doctor. Now, who are you selling to? The patient or the insurance companies? Very important distinction. Most doctors are selling to the insurance companies. You know, we're all told that, hey, selling to you the patient, you, you grade the doctor a lot. If the insurance company, which is how the doctor and the hospitals get paid, is unhappy, guess who has a big problem? They can piss you off. They can even sue you and the doctor can stay in business, but they piss off that insurance company or they piss off the accreditation of the state, they're out of business. So part of that is understanding who you're selling to and how valuable that relationship is. Once you've identified who you're selling to, if you're selling cars, are you selling to men and women? Or are you selling to their fantasies? Or are you selling to their practicalities? I used to sell cars and you could sit there and run down the list of performance and engine size and speed. Unless they are a person who really appreciates that stuff, you're wasting your time. You're better off taking that person for a ride and saying, can you feel the power? Can you understand? You know, just imagine how you feel as you roll up to your friend's house in this brand new car. That's why people buy, how they feel. All sales are an emotional decision on some level. I don't care what you say. If you're in sales, you know this. If you're not in sales, you think this is poppycock or bullshit. But the reality is, time brain is in charge. Now that you understand that sales is that important, how do you go about making sales? I'm going to teach you this really, really quick. Treat everybody like your buddy. Not, you know, that fake ass buddy or, you know, someone you hang with, but like your buddy. When you call up your friend, how do you go? Do you go Mr. Johnson, Mr. Williams, or do you go like, hey, it's important talking to people in a language that makes them feel warm and fuzzy. Now, I know that sounds very different than what I do on this channel, but I'm in the process of getting rid of people because they're not my target customer. So my language and thing, you know, that's advanced sales tactics right there because 
many people are under the false assumption that I want to make as much money as possible. I want to sell to everybody. And the reality is it's not going to happen. Prime example, the war between Team Apple and the war between Team Android. There are people who are emotionally invested in their phones. I'll never buy an Apple product. Eh, Android's too fucking slow for me. You've got that duality, that civil war over an appliance. So you cannot tell me that it's not emotional. And with that war, with Apple being the most valuable company in the world, and they can't sell everybody, how do you think you're going to do it? Should you pitch a company? Now, there's this book, Pitch Anything, by Oren Claff. It's a good book. Get it. Now, there are some businesses and there are some things you don't need a pitch. There's some things you do need a pitch. It's just, just, once again, this is all about learning that sales is job one because you might have a very edgy sale or you might have a very sexual sale or you might have a very practical sale, depending upon what you sell and who is your customer. Like, let's say I'm an Apple head. Now, one of the reasons I'm an Apple head is because it's practical. And I have people, it's like you're an Apple fanboy, but see, this is one of the things when you run a business. You have a lot of decisions to make, you have a lot of stuff to keep up with. The less friction you have with your business, the better you're off you are. You agree? Yes or no? Well, I had a Samsung Galaxy and the phone was fine and it was big and I like it and I liked it and everything, but for me, it had too many damn options. I didn't want that many options. Whereas if you are a person who's just a technoid and you love all of these options, you can't have enough. You can't have enough apps. Whereas me, I like to turn on my phone, do what I need to do. I got maybe 34 apps on my phone and I pretty much use 12 consistently and they're all functional apps and I'm good. Plus it dovetails into my workflow with the iMac, the MacBook Pro. So it made sense from a practical standpoint for me to get an Apple iPhone. That may not make sense for you, but once again, who's your customer? Where does your customer live? How does your customer think? When I was taking all of those phone calls, because now I'm up to like 350 people that I've personally talked to, I learned a lot by talking to the customer, talking to you and asking you some simple questions that made me change the course of this channel. That's how powerful it is to know what your market is. And you know, I, I had this little thing going on the other day because someone came on a video and was just talking about why aren't you on Amazon and why aren't you on eBay? And that's like, cause I don't want to be, I know better. But part of the thing is when you do Amazon and you do eBay, you're not a salesperson. You're a farmer or a vendor where you go out and get stuff and you put it in the pipeline. Whoa, nothing wrong with that. Before you lose your mind and you start burning your bras and shit. But what I'm saying is you spend five, 10, 15 years on eBay and Amazon and you don't learn how to sell. At some point, you're going to have to learn how to sell. And the sooner that you do this, the better off you're going to be. I think the guys who go to the flea market are probably going to be more geared for this because they deal with people and they deal with face-to-face -face sales exchanges all the time. But if you're an online dude or an online chick and you never deal with real people, you are going to be in for a rude awakening. Seriously. I got a little story to tell you in just a minute. And this is all going to dovetail into sales, marketing, and a lot more. Okay. Years and years ago, I used to sell furniture on Craigslist. I was buying furniture from Coaster, Titan Importers, uh, which was also known as Home Elegance. There was a few other places, uh, Acme Furniture, essentially cheap imports. And I was doing really, really well because I was an early adapter and I was selling this stuff. I'll even give you the price lines, like say a Louis Philippe bedroom set, that's the sleigh bed. And that's the one with the curved top to the dresser and the nightstands. And there's like a hidden drawer. That's that design. I was killing it with it. Buy it for $5.99 all day. Sell it for $1,200 for free delivery on Craigslist. 
Sometimes I sell two or three of them. I was getting to the point where I was buying 10 at a time because I was moving them that fast. And some people didn't want nightstands. Some people only wanted the beds. Then I started buying a lot of the sleigh beds. Was stroking it out. Then there's this company, Underpriced Furniture. And this is really about respect because they taught me a lot. Well, I went out to their store, which was on Dawson Boulevard. And actually, I saw Keisha Coles in there. And at the time, I was in love with her. It was a wonderful moment. Oh, my God. It was a sweet girl, sweet girl. And I used to be in there all the time shopping them because they were my competition. Then I saw that I walked in and they were selling that Louis Philippe bedroom set. Same package I had for $6.99. Now, anyone that does any casual shopping is going to find them because they did a lot of television advertisement at the time. They had circulars. So anyone shopping for bedrooms, furniture that would do any due diligence wasn't going to buy my Craigslist deal. And I started to see my sales decline. So I go in there and I'm like, what the hell's going on? And then it just didn't happen with that. It started to happen with other stuff. So I go in there and I find out that they've got everything that I and other people on this first tier of selling furniture, maybe a small mom and pop furniture store, we're getting obliterated. And if you look around in your landscape of your city, your town, you'll see that, you know, maybe that furniture store that was in business 15, 20 years when we were growing, it's gone. Can't compete. And I'm going to tell you why they can't compete because of what I learned. So I would go in there and I started to see that they had a lot of furniture that I'd never saw before. It wasn't in my catalogs. And I was like, what the hell? So I call up Titan Importer because I had to go online Went to the Euro, to the Asian website because Titan uh, Home Elegance Titan Importer is based in the, the is China Thailand It's somewhere over there, and I found that website and I found that furniture, and I called them up and I gave them the model numbers and I said I want to get this, and she's like No, we cannot sell to you. What my money not good? No, they have contract. You have no contract. We cannot sell to you. Goodbye. Click. And that was the beginning of that story. And I was like, what the hell? So the lesson that I learned from underpriced furniture was they went ahead and took common stuff and blew it out the door because they were what's called a container buyer. They were buying containers like, you know, 10, 12 containers a week were going through that store. And that's where I got into the container game because what I'm telling you is a parable of what's going to happen to you on eBay and Amazon, more so Amazon. So I started playing the container game and, you know, when you start doing sea freight, when you start having 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100, $150,000 out there on the water and you got to wait two months to get it, six weeks to two months, then you got to have some place to put it. Then when they bring you the container, you got to pull it. You got to have, that's why I had two warehouses. You got to put that stuff somewhere. And then, you, then it brings up, you got to have the logistics and then you got to have the inventory system. You got to have a lot of stuff as well as that marketing arm. Well, I started playing the container game and I started selling again, but I wasn't making as much profit as I used to. And I looked at the numbers and it was like selling more. I was buying it cheap. And I'll, I'll even give you another example. Something I knew, but I forgot. I used to work for something that was called, uh, damn, it's not home. It wasn't home imports or something like that. Uh, guys, Peter Spire, he used to own... Dalton Carpets. His family owned Dalton, Dalton Carpets before they sold it. I used to work in the warehouse and I saw the invoice for the stuff coming from Indonesia. And we had this armoire that was all this teak and stuff. It was crazy looking. On the invoice, it was $183, but we sold it in a store for $950. Now, I knew about container buying, but I didn't know about it until in my business. I knew about it from working in someone else's business. It's different when it's your money. So I did that and then I realized that, you know, unless I bought more containers and became a full-time furniture seller, I wasn't going to win and I didn't want to be a full-time furniture seller. So I started to liquidate all of my stuff on Craigslist, got rid of it, stopped ordering containers and just doubled down on the storage auction business and made way more money. And at one point I did have a furniture website, but that was very short lived because we we're making more money on Craigslist. But Part of this whole thing is when I saw what was happening, I had not one, not two, not three, but four other revenue streams to fall back on 
versus being sunk because what and once again this is a nod of respect to underpriced furniture because this is natural business law big fish takes little fish the smartest fish outwits the dumbest fish that's just reality uh, Amazon's not this malicious monster but the thing is their main goal is to win and for them to win a lot of you are gonna lose and I know people are like oh no 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 and this is why you're gonna lose because when you get, because I'm going to just go ahead and give you the topography. Small sellers who do esoteric or merchant fulfill probably are going to be fine because that's not really profitable for Amazon. Big sellers who are bringing in the containers who have enough money, capital, intellect, and staff where they can actually create their own brand, create their own revenue stream, they'll be okay. You guys right there in the fucking middle, that's what's going to happen to you. Because you're, you're caught up in the system and then you're going to see that you're making like great sales and then Amazon or another competitor is going to come in and marketplace compression is going to kick in and you or someone can come in with a better product and you got all this product at Amazon and then you got to like slash the price below cost to get rid of it. That happens. That happened to me when I was selling physical stuff. So. This is the reason that I put this stuff out because if you don't learn how to sell and job and sales is job one and you become a person who use tactics, you become a person who follows these certain systems in the Amazon eBay eco space that work. I'm not going to say they don't work, but what I'm going to say is they're short lived. And if you're enjoying that and living well off that, expect that to change really soon and all business changes. But the point I'm trying to make is if you learn that sales is job one and you act and you embrace that shit now and you build yourself some sales skills, you'll never be hungry again. You will never go without again. You'll always be able to make some money. Good market, bad market, doesn't matter because you know how to sell. Wells Fargo, PNC Bank, uh, TD Bank. These banks became huge during the Great Depression because they knew how to make it happen even when the world was literally falling apart. And that's what sales gives you. Sales gives you these incredible skills of marketing, of branding, and process. And if you learn these skills, you will become a very powerful person in your business or a very powerful person in someone else's business that can write your own fucking ticket. My last few jobs, I didn't send them a resume. It was a conversation. Okay, we know if you work, you can start this day. That was it. Those were my last three jobs. No resume, none of this other bullshit. And that's what happens when you learn how to sell. So in your business, your first job is how to sell. How to market. You got to know that stuff because that brings up all the other things such as Marketplace research. Who's your customer? It's very, very important. So that's your first job. That's what you need to do. That's what you got to work on. All right. This is Glendon. And if you like the contents of this video, and you should, be sure to subscribe, comment, and like. And once again, you have your free 19 business courses at the bottom, first link under there. Once again, I ask that you refer two people to the channel, two people to the free courses. And I ask if you find value in all that I'm bringing to you, that you pay what you want. The link is on the same page with the free courses. All right. All right. See you in the next video.